On November 24th, 2022, TF2 YouTuber and utterly terrifying sniper main Jaybird hosted a live stream in which he managed to secure a kill with every damage dealing weapon in TF2 in a time of 4 hours, 3 minutes, and 8 seconds. I saw this tweet and saw it as a challenge. On the day of my next live stream, just two days later, I was ready to take the record from him. The rules for the challenge were simple. If a weapon in the game deals damage, you need to get a kill with it. You do not need to incorporate any non-damaging weapon into your run. For example, you don't need to get an assist with the Jurati or a Medigun or anything like that. Only the weapons that deal direct damage matter. Weapon, weapon reskins skin. don't count. And for the sake of my run, I counted the Rainblower, Holy Mackerel, and the original as reskins, despite their minor differences. Multi-class weapons such as the shotguns, pistol, and pain train only need to be obtained by one of the classes that use them to count overall. Engineers' wrenches need to be melee kills, not sentry kills. The sappers also count towards this run and need to destroy a building, but this is a rule that Jaybird said he wouldn't implement going forward. I did it just so that it would keep the race between us as even as possible. Any weapon with a damage over time effect counts that effect towards getting a kill, so you don't need to kill someone with the shiv hit or the cleaver hit specifically as long as you get the bleed kill. Either one works. The same applies for any alt fire. As long as it deals damage and it's a part of the weapon, you're good. The final rule is one I didn't really follow. See, Jaybird did all of his kills on official Valve casual servers, but after waiting a solid four minutes in the beginning of my run to get into one that was even remotely usable, seriously my luck with casual is usually not this bad, I ended up doing most of mine on Uncle Topia. So no, I didn't technically beat Jaybird's run, and if this were being counted as an actual speedrun, this would be in its own category, like Uncle Percent or something. But you know, if you think about it, the fact that I got a lot of this on Uncle Topia is more impressive, right? I mean, a lot of the players are at a higher skill level on average than in casual, and there's no random crits which makes melee kills a lot harder, so really, this should still be more impressive, and the time I saved skipping a lot of queue times in bot-filled servers is surely balanced out by those factors, right? This is still cool, <laughs> right? Anyway, let's get on to the run. Say goodbye to you, ball fat, chucklehead! I went in class select order, so starting with Scout and ending with Spy. After waiting a minute and a half to find a game, and then waiting another minute and a half to get into that game, it ended up being infested with bots and completely unplayable, so that was a waste of time. It took me another minute to get into a decent Uncle Topia game, and Scout is full. Shit. This is a bad start, but no big deal. I'll just start off with Soldier. And after another 30 seconds of messing with my loadouts to make sure I'm not wasting a weapon slot on the buff banner, the run actually begins. And then the round immediately ends as I'm unable to get a kill on an Adderall addicted scout whose feet have never touched the ground, our team wins, and the server changes maps. So we change maps to Borneo, scout opens up, and now, a solid 7 minutes into the challenge, the run actually begins. Jesus Christ. After waiting for the round to start and getting spy checked by my medic, I managed to get a kill with my pistol, but get body shot by someone I'm sure was totally not a stream sniper. Yeah, by the way, if you're not a niche internet micro celebrity, I think this challenge will be a lot easier for you. So after dealing with that and spending way too much time hard focusing this sticky jumper demo on our backline, like why did I think he wouldn't have good piping? He's using the sticky jumper on Uncle Topia. I finally managed to get a scattergun kill. I was fighting a fairly choppy frame rate, so I feel like my performance suffered a bit here, but I seriously need to step up my game if I'm going to beat Jaybird. This is a terrible start. But I make up for it in spades with this next performance, where I'm able to get kills with the winger, bat, and shortstop in quick succession. Now that's what I'm talking about. Just before the round ends on this absolute steamroll of a game, I managed to get a babyface's blaster kill as well. The start of the next round goes very well, and I once again get a full blowout. With the Soda Popper, Rap Assassin with a melee kill of all things, and Pocket Pistol, all taken care of. 
I'm luckily able to get a backscatter kill out of the way quickly, but their snipers are giving me trouble. Thankfully, I'm able to get a Boston Basher kill without too many embarrassments. Oh jeez, I'm an idiot. I missed. Ah! And after some struggling, the Force of Nature, Cleaver, and Sun on a Stick all follow quickly. The Phantom War kill comes surprisingly easily thanks to a helpless cornered sniper, and a post-game kill with the Sandman leaves just the Atomizer and the Candy Cane. If you think that post-game kills shouldn't count, please email me at I don't give a shit at AOL.com. I'll also be counting pre-round kills, but only if the enemy tries to kill me first. No friendly killing allowed. And that includes the friendly stream snipers who try to get killed by me on purpose. Yes, both of those come up later. After a few more minutes of struggling, the Atomizer finally gets checked off, and now all that's left is the Candy Cane. And after sneaking up on a Pyro, I managed to get it at nearly the half hour mark. Not a great time, but at least that's over with. If you know what's good for you, you will come. Soldier will be mostly easier, but getting a kill with the man treads is not something I'm looking forward to. I get the shovel out of the way quickly with a well-timed med pick, and later get the rocket launcher done with in a kind of weird fashion. A sneaky heavy lands me a clean shotgun kill for all classes, and the rest of the round is an utterly horrible roll that results in me just barely sneaking in a direct hit kill. Luckily, a team scramble evens things out a bit, and the black box and reserve shooter kills are checked off next. I managed to get the panic attack and equalizer done in spite of this annoying ass stream snipe with vac bans on record, because, you know, he's too shit at the game to kill me without cheats, and after that, I managed to get the cow mangler. And then, as I'm trying to get the liberty launcher, this happens. Okay, um... Yeah, I accidentally pressed my bind for my auto-clicker. Why do I have an auto-clicker? Don't ask. Anyway, new server time, and I get a Liberty Launcher kill right out of the gate. And while I managed to get an airstrike kill pretty easily, this bison kill is giving me anguish. I knew this one would be hard, but I didn't know how hard, especially without the safety net of random crits. And I managed to get a beggar's bazooka into getting headshot time save to finish off the rocket launchers. This is very advanced speedrunning tech. Now it's just Soldier's two worst secondaries and his three best melees. In a stroke of pure luck, I managed to get both the Bison and the Market Gardener in the same life. Though the Market Gardener wasn't exactly as stylish as I would have liked it to be. It still counts. This next part is just painful. I fly around the map like some kind of dumb flying monkey and just barely managed to get a whip kill at the end of the round. I knew the man treads would be painful, but I haven't even come close. And when I do get close next round, I slid off of his head. I slid off of his fucking head. I hate this weapon, but 25th time's the charm, and I finally managed to get it through the power of sheer perseverance. The escape plan turns out to be a lot harder than I had anticipated, but thankfully, I managed to get a lucky kill on a scout running away from me, and Soldier is done at just over an hour. I'm saving the Pain Train and Katana for demo since they'll be a lot easier with the shields. But now, we move on to my most dreaded class. Pyro. I knew going in that this would be the hardest class, and I was absolutely right. We're already a quarter of the way through our time, and we've only got two out of nine classes done, and we're about to hit the potential run killer. Now, what's so wrong with Pyro, you might ask? Three words. Jungle. Fucking. Inferno. These three weapons, along with two of them being some of the worst weapons in the game, are some of the hardest to get kills with. I need to get a hot hand slap kill, a thermal thruster stomp kill, and worst of all, a gas passer afterburn kill. And I have to do that in a short enough time that I can get the other six classes done reasonably quickly. This is not going to be fun. Pyro starts off just about as bad as it possibly could, with me running into two, count them, two danger shield snipers, dear god why. I'm thankfully able to get a kill on their medic, but this does not bode well. The flog follows shortly afterwards, and the degreaser and flare gun come just as quickly. 
as well as the back burner, so at least Pyro's easy weapons are going well. And thankfully, this utterly clueless Demo Knight just kind of lets me get a Fire Axe kill on him, so that was nice of him. I can tell he wasn't a friendly stream sniper because he said, I hate in chat, as if he turned around at any point during this exchange. After a quick detonator kill, I managed to pull off this. Wait, wait, wait! Yeah! <laughs> Oh my fucking god, dude. Not only a third degree kill, but a third degree kill without random crits being utilized for its intended purpose. In spite of the difficult weapons to come, Pyro has been going fantastically so far. The Scorch Shot is understandably very easy, and I finally managed to get a Dragon's Fury kill to close off the primaries. I lose a bit of time just trying to get Mana Melter kills, but I do thankfully manage to get the Back Scratcher out of the way in the meantime. Unfortunately, it's all downhill from here, with nothing but Pyro's worst secondaries for this challenge, and all of his melees left to go. We're in for the long haul. God, I still see this sunshine match in my nightmares. It takes a while to get going, I'm just looking around desperately for any opportunity to get a kill, but eventually I find one, and manage to kill this medic with the volcano fragment. And I'm thankfully able to get the man melter out of the way too, and the power jack at the end of the round. Two secondaries, and four melees to go. And that goes down to three melees very quickly, as I'm able to combo a spy with my extinguisher to check it off. After a few failed gas passer attempts, I do manage to get a home wrecker kill, which is a massive relief. I'm also thankfully able to get the hot hand out of the way with a post round kill. Once again, if you think this doesn't count, please send me an email at suckafartoutofmyass at yahoo.gov. The next round, something absolutely miraculous happens. Give me a fucking break! And no one's gonna shoot those guys. Yeah, of course not. No, that, that spy is still wet. Wait! Wait! That's a gas passer kill! That's a gas passer kill! I cannot believe how quickly I was able to get a gas passer kill. I'd like to imagine that most people who have used this weapon have never even gotten one of these before. But after only a handful of gas throws, I was able to get it. This was a huge time save, and only two minutes later, I got a Neon Annihilator kill, closing out the melees. But now, with only one pyro weapon left, the real pain begins. How long do you think I spent trying to get a single Thermal Thruster stomp kill? Five minutes? 10 minutes, 15, how about half a fucking hour on just one weapon? Keep in mind, that's about how long Soldier, the entire class, took. On top of getting absolutely bodied by the sweatiest Uncle Topia scouts in existence, and just getting flat out bullied by the Soldier, I just can't wrap my head around how you're supposed to stomp anyone who isn't standing perfectly still with this thing. It feels like complete luck whether you can actually manage to hit someone with this or not, and don't even get me started on those near misses where all you do is gently nudge them away from you. I don't have nearly enough air control to actually strafe and land on someone I want to, so unless my trajectory is incredibly precise and they don't move, I basically just need to get lucky and have someone walk into my path. I honestly can't tell if getting a stomp kill or getting a taunt kill is more impractical. And even when I do miraculously manage to land on their heads, I just kind of have to hope they're at low enough health for this to actually kill them. I understand this is on me since I never used this weapon, but this was not fun. And I was starting to get tilted fast from just having to deal with this and constantly having to catch chat up on what was even going on and needing to answer the same handful of questions over and over again. I felt like I stopped having a chat and started having a frequently asked questions page and that just made me feel a lot more alone during this whole process. Normally, all of these recent challenge videos have a sort of second act low point where it seems like all is lost, but fuck me dude, this is the third class out of nine, and I'm already here. What the fuck is the third act going to look like? Anyway, Spy Chungus is one of my stream regulars and stands right underneath me to let me get a kill on him, but that doesn't count. I appreciate you trying to end my suffering as quickly as possible, but I have to do this on my own. And after several more painful failed attempts, I finally managed to get it on a Pyro who corners himself and forgets he has a right click button. Thank fucking god. The worst of the run is finally over, and now we finally move on to Demo Man. I'm gonna be all over ya!
The sticky bomb launcher is incredibly easy as expected, and the grenade launcher follows soon after. Then I get a quickie kill and in very rapid succession manage to get the iron bomber, bottle, and Scottish resistance all taken care of. I need you all to understand how cathartic this feels compared to the sheer agony of what I just got done going through. Being able to just kill someone and they die. It's fucking amazing, man. The lock and load is over with very quickly and the loose cannon and pain train are very quick to follow. All that's left is everything Demo Knight and the Caber. I'm not looking forward to the shield bash kills, but other than that, this shouldn't be too hard. After a weird charge, I get the Persian Persuader done, I beat this soldier with the Claymore, and seeing this katana demo on the enemy team inspires me to equip my own for an easy one-shot kill, and that's exactly what I end up getting, along with a splendid screen's shield bash kill. I am making up for a lot of lost time, with Demo Man going so well for me. And the time saves keep coming with both the Islander and Charge and Targe coming very quickly one after the other. The Skull Cutter is pretty easy thanks to a bit of hybrid knighting, and now the only melee left is the Caber, which doesn't do great with the Tide Turner, but I need the kill on both of them, so I have to run them together. But amazingly, I'm able to one-shot this scout to get the caber out of the way without even needing to get a crit. All that's left is the tide turner, and just a few lives later, I get it thanks in part to an Islander head boosting my shield charge damage. That's every single demo man weapon done in just about 15 minutes. That's an insane time. It could obviously be better, but this was such a breath of fresh air after the torture that was Pyro. I needed this as motivation to keep this run alive. And now, it was time for Heavy. I LOVE COMING! The minigun and the family business go down with ease, and now I don't have to worry about any more Heavy secondaries. The stock fists suck though, especially when Pyros know how to right-click. The Tomislav takes a bit more time, but this server is filled to bursting with spies and snipers, so this is not a good time for me to be playing Heavy. But the round still ends on a positive note, with me being able to get a heater kill, leaving only the Natasha and Brass Beast for primaries, and literally every single heavy melee. Luckily, this Demo Knight really wants to kill me in the pre-round of the next match I get into, so I punch him to death with a stock fist to secure that kill. If you think this shouldn't count, please email me at gargleonmyballsweat at compuserve.com. Dustful also lands us a fairly close but still quick Natasha kill, and mere seconds later, I finish off the miniguns with the Brass Beast. But now with all the miniguns done, we only have the melees, and playing Heavy Knight on Dust Bowl offense is a recipe for disaster. So it's time to switch servers. Well, it's not a full casual server, but it'll have to do. It's less people to punch, but also less people to shoot at me, so I think it evens out. And that it does! I managed to secure a KGB kill on a soldier with relative ease, and thanks to the first random crit of this challenge, the warrior spirit is quick to follow. And after a couple of failed attempts, including a frustrating tickle on a scout in the range of a sentry, I managed to check off the holiday punch too. Luckily, this demo knight soul temporarily gets sent to another dimension, which allows me to get an easy fist of steel kill, and a spy tries to get the jump on me outside of spawn, but he has my luck whenever I play spy, and so despite not being on my screen at all, he doesn't get a backstab on me, and I'm able to take him out with the Gru. All that's left is Heavy's worst weapon, the Eviction Notice. It proves to be painful for a short time, but in the end, these spies just aren't as slick as they think they are, and I'm able to close off Heavy in about 18 minutes. A respectable amount of time, all things considered. You could argue the validity of a couple of these kills, but I could argue the validity of your mom's weight on her driver's license, so don't fuck with me. I told you don't touch that darn erection. Engineer time. For fun, I decide to go with the Short Circuit's primary fire to get a kill, and manage to get that along with a Widowmaker kill fairly easily before the round ends and we change servers once again. The next match on Barn Blitz starts out amazingly, with me getting a Wrangler kill, a miraculously quick Pompson kill on a Brass Beast Heavy of all things, and a Wrench kill all in one go. I wasn't sure if I should count the Wrangler since it's technically not a damaging weapon, but counting it didn't remove too much off of my time and it has a unique kill icon, so I counted it. It's not like I need to get any other sentry kills, so this gives the sentry some representation. I thought I'd spend way more time on the Pompson, but I guess I was wrong. Thank you, kind stranger. The Rescue Ranger surprisingly ends up giving me far more trouble, but even then, I'm able to get it done in only a few minutes. Already, there's only five engineer weapons left, and it feels like we just started. 
but a lot of those are melee weapons, and we're stuck pushing Barn Blitz last. Meaning, we're gonna be running at people with our melee like an idiot as sentries mow us down. That goes well for the southern hospitality, thankfully, but the other melee weapons have a bit more trouble. The frontier justice is done quickly thanks to an easy cleanup kill, but trying to go in for a gunslinger kill? Yeah, no, that's not happening. That means we either have to push through what looks to be maybe 9 engineers so we can be on defense, or else spend the next 7 minutes of the game beating our heads against a brick wall trying to get melee kills. I think you know which option I went for. It eventually works out for the gunslinger thanks to a clueless engineer, but running at people with the Eureka effect is not proving to be the smartest play. But eventually, the clueless engineer returns and lets me walk right up to him and bash his skull in with a giant futuristic spanner, leaving me with only the jag. The bad melee luck continues as I get backburner face stabbed somehow? But right as the round ends, I'm able to get a jag kill on a spy who's harassing our other engineer, and we're somehow able to push through that engineer hell to win the game. I'd like to thank myself and my teleporter, but just like that, the engineer is done. After the absolute horror of Pyro, Blitzing through the defense classes so quickly has been a massive bonus for me, and it's made up for a lot of lost time. In total, Engineer only took me 18 minutes, and most of that was on offense on Barnblitz last. If I were in an optimal setting, that time could be cut down even further. All that's left are the support classes, and I have more than an hour to get through them all. I'm going to saw through your tiny little- Medic has very few weapons, but all of them are going to be hard. The stock syringe gun proves that right out of the gate, giving me nothing to work with, especially when the enemy medic is constantly popping quick fix ubers that I can't possibly hope to out damage. But I get very lucky against the retreating demo man and get the first out of medic's 9 weapons done. And thanks to a completely suicidal play that should not have worked, the bone saw is done with next. My luck with the blutsauger is... God damn it. God damn it! Stop! Stop finishing yourselves off! I just want to kill you! Interesting. But I'm able to get it done shortly after that with a cleanup kill, and then finish off a few people with the Ubersaw in the post game to knock two more weapons off the list. However, the next round of Barn Blitz is honestly one of the single worst rolls I've ever seen in this game, and that is saying something. Thanks in no small part to this original soldier who is extremely secure about the size of his penis, and who thinks that spending more time in the casual queue than in the actual game is fun. I switch servers and it's an instant improvement. I managed to kill a scout with the overdose, a sniper with the solemn vow, and I finished off the round with a post-game crossbow kill on a sniper. All that's left is the amputator and the vita saw. Oh yeah, and I got another crossbow kill anyway, so the post-round one doesn't even really matter. Thanks to the world's most clueless flog pyro, a category with a lot more competition than this speed run, I'm able to secure the amputator kill, and on my first life trying, I get the vita saw kill on this soldier thanks to a random crit, and a speed boost from my friendly scout. And just like that, Medic is done. The small pool of weapons was definitely the biggest contributing factor here, and it did a lot to save me time. Now, with less than an hour to go, we only have two classes left, Sniper and Spy, and they're not gonna be easy. I'm gonna wank right between your eyes! I'm in the unfortunate predicament of playing Sniper on a server that has maybe five scouts that have all just had about a gallon of espresso each, so getting kills here is not going to be a fun time. But that doesn't stop me from landing a lucky headshot on one of the little cockroaches to get the sniper rifle out of the way. I managed to get one of the maybe two or three people on their team who isn't playing Scout to get a Machina headshot, which I'm sure is heresy to all the Machina users out there, but I'm not one of them, so I don't care. Speaking of not caring, I don't care for fighting this wave of Scouts anymore, so I go somewhere else to play Sniper. This class has no counterplay, by the way. On Badwater, a headshot to SMG combo takes down a Pyro, and gets one of Sniper's two secondaries out of the way. The same combo then gets me an easy Carbine kill, and I switched to Jurati to make my melee kills a lot easier, especially with the Bushwhacker. But while it was the scouts on the previous server giving me trouble, now it's the Pyros, and the Flare Gun and Detonator are quickly losing their spots as my favorite Pyro secondaries, but I'm just trying to get some Heatmaker headshots. I do thankfully manage to get it on a Soldier, 
but I'm getting really sick of matching into empty servers like this. I don't understand why this happens to me. Thankfully, an easy cleanup body shot gets the bizarre bargain out of the way quickly, but I still haven't gone through a single sniper melee. After a great deal of struggle against this one sniper with a razorback and vaccinator shoved up his ass of all things, I finally managed to get him with the Sydney Sleeper, and I get the feeling that this is another not-so-fun server for me. And of course I say that and get my own vaccinator medic to start pocketing me. Nice. I never asked for this. But it helps me land a classic kill, leaving only one primary, and still every single melee left to go. And a half-hearted lob with the Huntsman gets me that kill. Meaning, I just have to brainlessly run at people with my melee. As Sniper. Four times. Ah, oh, Christ. The next three servers do not improve my mood. A half-empty one filled with bots, a half-empty one where a vaccinator pocketed heavy is spawn camping us, and a half-empty one that's just about 8 seconds away from ending as soon as I joined it. Nice. I don't know why, I think God just hates me. Speaking of God hating me, as I finally get into a half-decent server, I random crit this rocket jumper soldier, then hit him again, but for some inexplicable reason, his medic decided beforehand that he was a prime overheal target, so he manages to survive. I just don't understand, man. Bad luck after bad luck after bad luck. This is just not my day. And that's a story for a while. I don't think it's quite as bad as the sheer amount of suffering I went through trying to get the thermal thruster kills, but this feels like a very appropriately placed second act low point in terms of my morale. I was fucking drained by this point. But I eventually managed to persevere and get a clueless sniper with my Kukri. One out of four done. The Shiv does not offer better luck. People just stealing my kills or finishing themselves off or dead ringing, it all just sucks. It takes so long to kill people with this shit weapon and that sucks so bad for when you need to get kills fast. But I get it done eventually by making an utterly suicidal play on this medic. The Shan Sha mercifully does not offer much resistance, and a gracious sniper who challenges me to an honorable melee duel secures me my first easy sniper melee kill. And now all that's left is to Jurati bushwhack a someone. Normally easy, but on a server like this, I don't trust it to be that simple. It seems like a non-starter at first, but it only took a soldier coming to spawn for me to get the kill and finally finish off Sniper. That went worse than I thought it would, and with just over 20 minutes left in this run, I'm going to need some absolutely miraculous spy luck if I'm going to win this. And considering spy is not only one of my worst classes, but also one I have terrible luck with, we're in for some shit. I'm coming to Among Us. Pornography. Well, after a false start, I managed to get a knife backstab and a stock sapper sap. So not a terrible start getting two weapons out of the way quickly. And in the next life, I'm thankfully able to get the red tape recorder out of the way. Sappers are taken care of. But high pass ends with only those three weapons taken care of and 16 minutes left on the clock. 16 minutes to do nine weapons. I head back to Uncle Topia on Thunder Mountain, a map with lots of verticality and plenty of ammo packs and I instantly lose time as I join the second the first round comes to a close. There is no way I can make it. After a minute and a half wasted in the pre-round, I say, fuck it, whatever happens, happens. In spite of everything, my lack of skills in the class, the sheer time disadvantage I was at, and in spite of my stream shitting itself, right as I was on the wire, I pulled through. The shots I took were risky, but precise, and my stabs didn't screw me over. And not only did I beat those 9 weapons in 16 minutes, I did it in 9, beating Jaybird's world record by 7 minutes. 
Now, while I am proud of myself for this record, this was far from optimized. Between the lost 8 minutes at the start, and my terrible luck with certain weapons like the jetpack and sniper melees, this time will absolutely go down in the future especially in a category where Uncle Topia servers are allowed. Not to mention, I didn't follow all of Jaybird's rules to the letter, but they weren't exactly rules that were set in stone, and even he went on to say he wouldn't be doing sappers in the future. This is only, sort of, a world record, and not one to take all that seriously. And with how not seriously Jaybird was during his speedrun, I expect that for people who do take this seriously, this record is going to plummet in the near future in both pure casual and uncle percent if that's even going to be an actual category. But regardless, I hope to be one of the people who takes this challenge to its next level. Thanks for watching. Yeah, summoning salt better fucking make a video about this category now. This is this is real. This is fucking real. <laughs>